Hello and welcome to the Bible Faith Global Broadcast. We are excited just to join you today to share some encouraging words from his word to encourage your spirits today just to have hope and to keep the faith. Such an exciting time. We're in the 15th chapter of the gospel according to John, verses 18 through 27 of what we're going to be dealing with today. And uh, subject matter being uh, entitled, The World is Not Your Friend. This is a great, great place for us to uh, set the standard that God has ordained for us as believers to walk in when it comes to our relationship with worldly uh, affairs and the, the spirit of the world. Amen. Now, when you look at those verses in John 15, starting at the 18th verse, it says, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. So Jesus is talking this to his disciples at this point, letting them know that the world, meaning those that are of the world, that are not of the fold, that have not been born again, are going to hate you. Why? Because they hated him first. And this is one of the things that should not take us off guard. It should not shock us. You know, regardless of how much good you do, regardless of the morally good things you do for the world, they're going to hate us because we're of him, because first it hated him. So we can't expect to be accepted. And that's a part of us that all of us have. We want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We want to be um, accepted for who we are. But we have to realize that in Christ, the world is not going to accept us. And it's good to note also that uh, too many times we align ourselves with the thinking of the world. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you're doomed to lead to failure in the kingdom of God. Establishing your spirit now that when it comes to uh, receiving wisdom, receiving understanding, receiving the fullness of truth, it only rests in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and in the person of the Holy Spirit. When you know that, when you settle that, then you're not unsettled by what goes on in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the issue that we have in the church. Today, the church is trying to save uh, the world without personal relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. You cannot function and operate in the body of Christ, in the kingdom of God, having so much emphasis on uh, betraying the principles of truth, mm -hmm. betraying the standard of truth, betraying the moral fabric uh, that's embedded in the gospel. We've got to honor that in spite of everything. But we also must recognize that there's not a whole lot we can do as believers mm -hmm. to stop the prophetic uh, words that Christ has said that are going to come to pass mm -hmm. in this world in the last days. And we are definitely in the last days. Amen. And we have to realize we're going to be different. We will create it different. I think about what First Peter 2 and 9 says. It says, but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. So this lets us know that we're going to be peculiar, meaning we're going to be different. He has called us out of darkness into his light. So we can't be called out of darkness and long to be back in darkness just for the sake and peace of the world. We have to realize we have been called out for a reason, called out to shine. So those that are in the world that want to come to the light, that want to know more about this light, we are that light. But again, we have been called out of the light. We're peculiar. So a lot of times, you know, you don't want to be the one that's peculiar. You don't want to be the one that's, that stands out in the crowd. But realize if you are in the body of Christ, that's what we have been called to do. We have been called to stand up, stand out, so the world might see the light in us. Not that we should change the whole world, but they need to see a light because this world, that you know, is prophesied what's going to come of this world. But we're the ones to be the light for those that want to change. You know, it, it's like the scriptures say, uh, we're a city that sit on a hill that cannot be hidden. So the world's going to have their own opinions, mm -hmm. their own thoughts concerning us, but we've got to make certain we're displaying the entire spirit of, uh, of, of Christ in all of our actions mm -hmm. and in everything we do. When you begin to look at how we are to take the world, many believers don't understand uh, how we should act in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, the scriptures tell us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, says, be not conformed to this world. So when you look at it from that perspective, if God is encouraging us not to be conformed, then that means that that conformality 
is uh, something that we need to guard against. It's, it's something that's prevalent, that's going to operate throughout the uh, entire system of the world and will creep into the church. We are not to think the way the world thinks when it comes to the end times and to moral issues. We are not to think like the world uh, thinks when it comes to settling certain moral issues. Because let me tell you this, the world will bait and switch in a New York second. Amen. That means they'll make you feel like they're going to be for you. They're going to work in your favor. They're going to do things to favor you. And then the bottom line is once they get you uh, caught in their snare where you're dependent upon their way of thinking and their way of being right, and doing right, then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you're acting just like them. I've seen believers over the last several years uh, get upset uh, just the way the world gets upset and display the same actions and the same behaviors of the world. And yet we say we have a right to that because we are believers. No, we don't have a right to disrespect anyone. We don't have a right to hate anyone. We don't have a right to misuse or abuse anyone. That goes against the principles of uh, of God and the kingdom. And to do so is to walk in com, uh, conforming to the world. Recognize, darling, it's easy to conform. All you have to do to conform is to get into agreement with what the world is doing. And again, it may look righteous, it may look moral, it may look good, but we need to examine the spirit behind the action. Because listen, whatever's in the heart is eventually going to come out. And if it's in the heart, if, if immorality and quickness and all these other matters are in the heart, they're going to come out. Mm -hmm. Do not spend your time trying to please the world. You can't do it. You've got to please God. That's right. And you got to choose one or the other. You can't have both. you got to choose the way you're going to live. And I think about Jesus' prayer, even in John chapter 17, when he was talking to the Father, and he constantly reminded the disciples then that they're not of this world. But he said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou keep, should keep them from evil. Then he said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. So he's, this prayer is telling the Father, look, I know they're not of this world just like I was. But he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. So we are set apart or sanctified through the truth of the word. So you cannot live in the world, meaning live a lie and truth at the same time. The way we're set apart from the, wor the world is the word of God, which is the truth of God. So again, you have to make sure you're, if you're going to walk in the truth, you walk in the truth. It's a thin line. And most of us, some people try to cross that line and live both ways. But you got to realize we're already set apart and it has to be one or the other. It cannot be lukewarm. It can't be in the middle, but it has to be either or. And when you look at, at the way to not conform to the world, mm -hmm. the way to have the right attitude toward the world is to recognize that it's all about the mindset. Mm -hmm. It's all about your, your way of thinking. It's all about your way of doing and being right. When you choose God's way of doing and being right, that means you're seeking first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and all these other things will be added to you. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, that comes about not by you're just, uh, just feeling like it or, or just uh, trying to act like it. Mm -hmm. There has to come a transformation. Amen. And the scriptures tell us that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that word transformed there means uh, being, uh, being completely evolved into or evolving into the fullness of uh, maturity for your cycle of, of life. And that's what God is all about. Mm -hmm. That's what serving God is all about. The, just recognize that the world, regardless of how much they say they love you mm -hmm. and they love the Lord and they love the church, the world, and we're talking about a spirit here, the spirit of the world hates God's people. It hates God mm -hmm. and it hates everything connected to God. Amen. And we have to take that attitude that Jesus isn't the father to when it comes to the ter terms of the world. He didn't condemn them. He knew that they needed a savior. And you think about John 3 and 16, what a verse that most of us know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But if you go further to that 17th verse, it says, For God sent not his son into the world 
to get to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So again, he didn't send his son to condemn the world and, you know, for us to always constantly saying you're doing wrong, you're going to hell. That is not our job. But he said he loved them. He loved the world so much that he gave his only son. And that's the way we need to be. We don't need to condemn so much, but show his love. People are not going to be drawn by condemnation. They're not going to be drawn by someone constantly telling them they're wrong, but they need to see that we love them past their failures. They need to see that we love them past their faults, wherever they are, and see hope that someone loved me in spite of me. And that's what Jesus did for us. So we have to remember that when we're, we're trying to win the world, we're trying to be the light, we have to remember how God did it. He did not do it through condemnation, but he did it through love. And we are to follow his example as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, what you're saying basically is this, that uh, our responsibility, that salvation, that everything we do is not about condemnation, mm -hmm. but it's about conviction. Mm, and when you look at it from that perspective, that means everything we do should be bringing others to conviction, mm -hmm. not to condemnation. Because condemnation is not going to do anything but close the hearts of those we're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. But when you can give them the truth, give them the word, give them the solution to their problem, mm -hmm. then if, as they receive it, it will bring them under uh, conviction, mm -hmm. which means they'll begin to recognize, I need to change some things about my life. But it's not going to come about by you talking like them, acting like them, working like them, believing like them. That's not going to change them. You do not want to become friends with the spirit of the world to win them to Christ. That is not what the apostle meant when he said, I have become all things to all men by all means. Uh, I might win some. That's not what he's talking about. But he is talking about how he was able to actually be around any situation, any circumstance, anything he was going through, anything was brought forward against him, mm -hmm. and he kept the spirit of Christ. He kept the perfect witness. He did not go around saying he never got upset, but he never allowed his anger to turn to sin. Mm -hmm. He never allowed his anger to turn to condemnation, mm -hmm. but he always walked, lived, operated in such a manner as that his very life cause conviction to come upon those who encountered him. Let me ask you a question. When someone encounters you, do they come under condemnation mm -hmm. or conviction? That's a good question. If they come under condemnation, then it means that you may be doing some things that's judgmental toward them. Mm -hmm. Uh, but on the other hand, if if you're operating like Christ in the love of God and standing on God's word for your life and not demanding that everybody uh, had better get right with God uh, right now, then, then what's going to happen is they're going to see you. They need to see something in you that would cause them to come under conviction. Mm -hmm. What will cause an individual to come into conviction is when you when they're fussing, fighting, and arguing with you, and you give a soft answer, you give a, a love expression. All of a sudden, they begin to realize that hey, you know, um, they're really believers. Sometimes, and I, I did say sometimes, sometimes you'll have unbelievers mistreat you just to see if you're really who you are. And if you are who you are, no matter how anybody treats you, you're going to treat them the way Christ will treat them. That's right. Now, when you look at verse 20, it says, remember the word that I said unto you. This is still Jesus talking to his disciples. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So he's reminding them, look, they, they persecuted me, so they're going to persecute you. And I think about the fickleness of the world sometimes, just like in Jesus' day when, you know, at the beginning they loved him, they saw him do miracles. You know, they were all about Jesus, 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 Jesus. But then at the same time, they're the same ones that wanted to kill him. We can expect the same things. There's no less that's happening today with us. He's saying, look, if they did, the same, did that to me, they're going to do that to you. So you can't get too close to the world and think that when they say they love you, that they say celebrate you, that it's going to stay that way. They can switch on the drop of a dime and also want to kill you as well because of who you are and who you represent. You are still part of the Father, and they know that. So regardless of what they say, regardless of what they do and how they celebrate you, if they're of the world, know that it can change just like it changed with Jesus. And he told us this so it won't catch us off guard. It won't catch us by surprise because 
because he's like saying, look, I've been there. They did it to me and they're going to do it to you. This is something that we can expect. But it also encourages us that, you know, it's really not about you, but it's about who in, who's in you. They did it to me and they're going to do that to you because of who whom sent you. And that is God. You know, you look at that 21st verse and it says, all these things will they do unto you mm -hmm. for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. Meaning because of how they feel about me. Mm -hmm. uh, because they know not him that sent me. Mm -hmm. and, and this is good. Mm -hmm. This will help you to forgive wrongdoers toward you. This will help you to, to operate in a spirit of love and forgiveness. When you understand that the reason they act the way they act, the reason they do the things they do, mm -hmm. is because they don't know God. And when you don't know God, you're subject to do anything. Mm -hmm. Our job is to bring to them a knowledge of God the way Jesus brought a knowledge of God. The way Jesus brought a knowledge of God is he came to this world, mm -hmm. but he was not of this world. The things that normally the world would do, Jesus did not do. Right. But Jesus did exactly what God wanted him to do. He did what pleased God in spite of how man operated and functioned among him. Mm -hmm. When someone comes at you, when someone uh, persecutes you, when someone deals with you harshly or in an ungodly manner, mm -hmm. what if you would just take a, a moment to just consider the fact that they can't help themselves mm -hmm. because they don't know God. And you, all of us, we all know what it's like not to know God. We all know what it's like to have self-righteousness from a, a worldly perspective. Mm -hmm. We all know that. We came from every single one of us. Darlings, if you're a believer, every single one of us started out uh, in this life as sinners. It's when God saved us and we began to study his word and began to get an understanding of who Jesus is through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit indwelling in us, we began to have a good knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Just remember, they don't have the spirit of God, so they can't know God. So they get a free pass as far as their actions are concerned and us judging them according to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. The key is when you don't know God, you're apt to do anything. Mm -hmm. You're apt to live any way. You're apt to treat people any way. How do you think the Lord Jesus was able to hang on the cross, give his life and offering for sin and make the statement when it all came to an end? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Listen to me, darling. There's a lot of folks are mistreating you mm -hmm. because they don't know what they're really doing. They think that they're really uh, defending their ground. They feel like that they're really justified in what they're doing when in reality, they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if when you're in sin, darlings, you don't really know uh, how to live right. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to do right. You don't know how to treat people right. When you don't know God, then you don't know him to the degree that you don't know how to act the way God wants you to act. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on with the world. You can forgive them quickly. Don't mm -hmm. ever let a long time go between you and your forgiving someone who's wronged you. It doesn't matter whether they get it right or not. What matters is whether you get it right. Listen to me carefully. It does not matter whether they get it right with you or with whoever. That doesn't really matter. What really matters is do you get it right? Right. Do you act the right way? Do you carry yourself in a forgiveness uh, state of an, an attitude and, and a way in God? Because when you get it right, then it makes no difference whether they ever get it right or not. Mm -hmm. You are guaranteed to be a faithful witness of who you are in the Lord Jesus. Amen. And I wanted to read this note in the book. It says, the more Christ-like one becomes, the more this world and the God of this world hates you. To love one's life in this world is to lose it. The world is in, the world is at enmity with God. And I wanted to read uh, Matthew ten, John. I think it's John. Yes, John twelve and twenty five. It says, "He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hated his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal." So a lot of times you may feel like I'm losing my life. You know, I'm giving up all these things, but you're really gaining eternal life or gaining the riches in this life when you die to this world, when you lose to this world. You know, they people may see you losing on this side, but you're really gaining. So again, the more Christ-like you become, the more this world will hate you. They feel make you feel like you think you're too good. And that's not the case. You just have a standard. You know, people will say something like, you think you're holier than thou. No, I'm, I don't think that, but I, I want to live according to the Bible. So again, 
The more you line yourself up with, with Christ, the more people will have something against you because they feel like, you know, you think you're better than them. And it's not that. You just have a standard. You want to do things Christ's way, and they don't like it. So they're going to find ways to persecute you. They're going to find ways to belittle you, but you have to stand your ground and not make um, help, have them to make you think that you're acting that way, but you're just living the lifestyle. You, you know, there's something just popped up in my spirit. When you begin to, to look at life and live in life, we all want people to think well of us. Mm -hmm. We all want uh, others to, to actually feel good about us. Mm -hmm. But you need to accept the fact, darlings, that when it comes to living for the Lord, not everybody's going to like you. Mm -hmm. Especially those who are wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in the spirit of the world. They're going to hate you. It's, 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 it's necessary for you to recognize from their perspective where they're coming from so that you can take the proper God perspective to react or respond to them. So you recognize right away that uh, when it comes to serving the Lord and doing God's will, you are here not just to be a witness. Mm -hmm. You are here as a witness. And that's very important because anybody can be a witness. You know, being a witness does not necessarily mean your life has been changed. Anybody can be a witness, but very few, if any, can actually uh, be uh, the witness themselves. Mm -hmm. if when I say that, I mean, you can witness about all kind of things and, and present a good case, but can you be that witness? Mm -hmm. Which means, can you live what you preach? Mm -hmm. Can you live what you teach? Can I see Christ in you? Mm -hmm. Do you represent Christ in everything you do? Are you fighting at the food line and, and <laughs> at the gas tank and all other kind of ways? Are you really speaking great hate, words of hate and words of, 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 of malice against others uh, and you are a believer? Darling, that dog won't hunt. When it comes to living for God, you got to be what you say. You have to be what you say. You cannot just talk the talk, darlings. You've got to walk the walk. And walking the walk means that if they persecuted the Lord, they're going to persecute you. If they mistreated Jesus, they're going to mistreat you. If they don't love God, they're not going to love you. And the key is you don't allow that to influence how you feel about them. What the Bible said, treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. This is Bible. This is word of God. This is being Christ-like. Are you willing to come to the plate? Are you willing to be who you really say you are? Guess what? You can't do it by yourself. That's why God sent the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of you, not to make you, not to demand it of you, not to treat you like a slave, but to lead you, to guide you, to give you understanding, to give you the truth so that you can do what God would have you to do and be what God would have you to be. Guess what? He is the power of God for you to do it. You are an overcomer. That means that who's inside of you helps you to overcome whatever you're going through. That's right. And, you know, you may wonder why as we're teaching, well, why does the, the world hate us so much? Why did the world hate Jesus so much? It's because we remind them of what they should be doing, remind them of the wrong um, mindset that they're in. If you look at verse 22 in John 15, it says, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned. But now they have no cloak for their sin. So Jesus has come and pulled the covers back and they don't like it. So a lot of times it's not that people don't like you personally, but it's the God in you that reminds them that they're in the wrong. It reminds them that they know better and they don't like it. It's just like, you know, you've been hiding something for so long and as long as you keep it hidden, you're good. But as soon as it's exposed, it makes you vulnerable and it makes you have to change. It makes you have to give an answer for why you're doing what you're doing. So this is why the world hated Jesus, and this is why the world hated us. So again, don't take it personal. It's just letting or reminding them that they need to change, that they, they, their sin, the cover has been taken back, and everything, all the sin in their life has been exposed. So this is why they hated him. And when you look at verse 23, it says, He that hated me hated my father also. So again, he's talking about taking it back up to the, the, chain, the chain of command, the father, the son, 
and us. They didn't just hate him, but they hated his father also. And he reminds us that they're going to hate us too. You, you know, when you look at that verse, it says, hateth mm -hmm. uh, me and hateth mm -hmm. my father. That word hateth mm -hmm. uh, actually is interpreted in the right manner by saying it's a continuation mm -hmm. of a behavior mm -hmm. of hatred. Amen. A continuation mm -hmm. of a behavior of hatred. Mm -hmm. And if uh, he said in the 24th verse, if I had done, not done among them the works which none other man did, mm -hmm. they had not had sin. Mm -hmm. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this coming to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. Mm -hmm. When you begin to look at, at sin, mm -hmm. when you begin to look at being separated from God, mm -hmm. there is now no excuse to be separated from God, but you got to come by it God's way. Amen. And God used a, a later, made it very plain and simple and used a very simple basic technique. He actually sent uh, his only begotten son to live in this world without being stained by the world to prove to us that you can live in this world and not be stained by the world. He was human just like us. He went through the same temptations and limitations just like us. The difference in him and us is he had the Holy Spirit without measure, which simply means he understood what it was like to surrender uh, his will to God's will in a whole lot of avenues. you got to understand, darlings, that there's no no excuse for you to be where you are when you're in disobedience to God. There is no excuse. All of them, all the excuses, as the old saying goes, has been nailed to the cross, and you do not have to be where you are. Now, you do have to come about it God's way. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through your faith and your confidence and your belief in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, let me say it because it needs to be said two or three times when it's mentioned. There's no other way. There's not Muhammad, not none, any of these other folks, and not any of these uh, other denominations that deny Christ. None of them. The only way to heaven is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Some folks say, that's hard. That's mean. No. He died for you. That's right. He died to release you from sin. He took your sin. Whatever you've been doing, whatever you've been doing wrong, even if you're a child of God, Jesus took even those sins to the cross. So there is absolutely no uh, reason for you to be contrary to God. Mm -hmm. He gave you the absolute solution to, to, to sin. That's right. And I think about what Paul said in Galatians 4 16 when it comes to the truth. He said, am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. So a lot of times in this life, we have enemies of the world because we simply tell the truth and because we simply live the truth and we stand on that truth. You know, when you're in the word and we're rightly biting the word the way we need to, you're going to have people to come with you all types of ways, wanting to, to persuade you to see another truth outside of God's word. But you got to remember, we have to stay in the truth because that's all there is. There's no other foundation but the word and the truth. And when you decide to stand in the truth, when you decide to stand in the word, you're going to have enemies. And sadly, sometimes those enemies will be in the fold, but you have to remain that God's word is our truth. It's what sets us apart. It's what sanctifies me. It was, it's what fortifies me in my relationship with him. Because without his word, we couldn't be sanctified. So again, you're going to have enemies and it's okay, but you have to realize why and realize as long as you're in the truth, that's where your strength is. That's where your source is. Yeah, and, and we, when we, we lay it on the, on, the, uh, on the table like we are today, mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of folks are going to like it. Not a lot of folks are going to receive it. Mm -hmm. But the truth is the truth. Mm -hmm. And when you look at what foundation we as believers have, that 26 and 27 verse brings it completely home. Mm -hmm. He said, Jesus said, but when the comforter, mm -hmm. talking about the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost in some circles, mm -hmm. is come whom I will send unto you from the Father. He said, I'm going to send him to you, but it's going to be through the Father. Mm -hmm. uh, even the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of truth, yes. uh, which proceeded from the Father. He shall testify 
of me. Mm -hmm. John 16, 7 through 15 gives us the foundation for that because it lets it be known that, uh, that when Jesus comes on the scene, he's not coming on the scene to just be here, but he's coming on the scene to leave an impartation that's a person uh, in our lives. He is uh, actually introducing to us the fact that whenever he's gone, we're going to have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Mm -hmm. And with him inside of us, he's going to witness only one concerning only one thing. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus. Whatever Jesus tells him, he's going to tell us. Whatever Jesus wants, uh, that's what he's going to confess or profess to us. And in doing so, he is going to actually help us to walk in absolute truth. Mm -hmm. And when you look at um, that 27 verse, it says, And ye also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. When the note says, Believers have someone living on the inside that the world can never have. That person is the Holy Spirit, and he is our continuous source of power, strength, and truth. And, you know, we have to realize that we have him. They want what we have, but they don't want to do what we did to get it. And what we did to get it was be born again. You know, just transform by the renewing of your mind. Give your life to Christ. They want the power. They want the strength. They want the, they want all that, but they don't want to die. They won't, don't want to give their lives to the only one that can really save them and, and be the source of the strength they see in us. They can't understand how we can be killed all day long and still stand. They don't understand how we can have peace in the middle of a storm. They don't understand how you can still, you know, um, go through so many things and still stand. They can't wrap their head around that, but they know that it's an inner strength that only believers have, but we can still stand in the truth. And like I said, the only way they can have it is to surrender life, their life to the Lord, and they don't want to do it, and that upsets them, but we can stand and still be the witness and still be the, uh, the, the tree of life for those that want to have life and that life more abundantly. You know, it's a continuous cycle of living. Mm -hmm. The way you start out has got to be conducive to the way you're going to end out. Mm -hmm. You need to recognize right away that it's important that you represent your relationship with Christ in everything you do. Amen. You know, a lot of folks love that phrase, you know, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. But a whole lot of them that, that speak those words don't back them up. What you need to do, because a lot of them don't know what Jesus would do. They haven't studied the Bible. They haven't studied the Word. They've not had a relationship with God. The, one, the number one priority for you as a believer, number one priority, you say, where do I start? What do I really need to do? You need to cultivate a strong, close relationship with the Lord. And the way you do that is not by spending 50 hours in prayer. You don't do that by spending 150 hours in church. You do that by spending all the time you can saturating yourself in the Word of God. What God told Joshua in that first chapter of Joshua still stands today. We need to meditate in the Word day and night, and we need to do what we, uh, what we read and see therein. You don't understand success. Good success does not come from just uh, being able to make a good profit in business. It comes, good success comes from your being properly aligned with God. Amen. And I have a wonderful word of encouragement for you. Because for those that's wondering, now that I know that the world is going to hate me, what do I do? Will you continue to do good? I like how Luke 6, 27 and 28 puts it. It says, but I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Do the good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. So there's nowhere around doing the right thing. God is telling us, look, you got to do good to those that hate you. Love your enemies. So our job is to regardless of the world, regardless of how the world treats us, we're to do good and love them because God is going to get the glory through how we treat others and how we live our lives as a light in the earth. You may be still be, be saying to yourself, how can I do this? How can this be done? Here's the way it's done. Darlings, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And with God, all things are possible to them that believe. God bless you. Love you. We're going to be with you again in our next session together. To then continue to walk in the goodness of God and let the Lord be your blessing. Amen. God bless.